Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It is a beautiful hump day, and I want to be wishing you well. I want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest hump days possible over here in cryptocurrency land. Bitcoin doing fuck all in the overnight hours, but actually a couple more trades did uh, did show themselves, did reveal themselves. So let's get in a live scene right here, wasting no more time, wasting no time at all, in fact. And as we start off with the higher time frames, let's actually get on over here to the daily. Of course, as long as Bitcoin is above this Cyan 89 exponential, which is coming in right around 39.30, I would be looking at this overall consolidation as just that a consolidation which is actually right above a a support turns or sorry resistance turn support so i do give that the due diligence that it deserves but for right now uh on the lower time frames it is just looking like we are having actually another rejection off the top trend line of this do you want to call it a flag formation you can call it whatever the fuck you want to call it i don't care what it's called all i care about is how we react upon support and resistance uh technically i suppose on the four hour you could say that this is some sort of a pennant forming and uh resistance is coming in right around four thousand. support right around 39.30 which is actually marked off by our higher level um exponentials as well so that would be the daily 89 as we just saw and also the 12 hour 200 so it's going to be a two day uh, 50 exponential as well. So a lot of things kind of aligning with these areas, which give it good confluence. Also, volume signature confirming that this is a nice consolidation. And really, the only play to be made for the past four days since we got into this area was um, what's it called? It, it was uh, it was just buy support, sell resistance. The most the most classic of them all. So I know it's not it's not anything sexy. It's not anything too crazy. Doesn't involve all that, you know, <laughs> crazy skills or anything like that. But most of the time, things are just consolidating, and that has been the play for the past four days. So if you did get to short that last night, we did watch that one actually on stream on the test uh, right around 4,000. Uh, that, that was a position to take, then take then take profits right on the right on the test support, maybe even go along there. Um, so again, you know, until we actually break out one way or the other, that is the play for myself. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm just kind of sharing what I'm doing in these exact sort of same situation. Put it that way. Anyway, so back onto the charts, we do see that as long as we are here, I, can, I will look at the medium time frame oscillators, which actually have been getting price action relatively right. Uh, four hour stokes are up right now, and they are up while we do approach a resistance. However, we were just followed up by a major bearish engulfing dildo. And more importantly, on this four hour, we are not printing any sort of we're not printing any sort of divergences. It looks like uh, do we have anything to be aware of on the jewel? Oops, let's get it on over here. Nope, no wrong button. There we go. And you can see the jewel is actually perhaps setting up on a four hour uh, it's still going to take some time it's going to take at least two to three more ticks if this is going to be a setup i believe the three hour already has set up and it is this this might be uh, potentially signaling a pretty massive short uh we'll need to see the next tick but if the next tick is down if you have access to the jewel i would be looking at i would be looking to take a trade off that um that would be a relatively powerful signal and uh and i would be looking for a move probably down to the low side of the range 38 30 38 50 ish area um so of course you know nothing too glamorous in this range unfortunately but that's just you know that's just bitcoin right now so with that said let's actually get back on over because i did forget to show this the 12 hour 200 exponential we actually did close above it yesterday um sorry on the last tick but of course we need to both open and close above it for it to be you know confirmed kill as far as i'm concerned in fact the 12 hour total time frame getting price action very 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 very, very properly uh, if you do want to make this a little bit more simple the red 10 simple is actually you know giving us our, our more preliminary support and the 200 exponential obviously the more preliminary resistance um there is a measure move to be made off this baby in the more low time frames which if we go off this guy right here, we did it last night, it would be all the way uh, to this next resistance right around 4110, 4120. Uh, I think that that would be pretty damn likely uh, if we did break it out uh, to the upside. Of course, that would also meet with our past prior high actually perfectly on uh, late February 24th, 24th of February, I should say. And more importantly, when we go back on over here, you can see that this has been kind of the resistance area. I know a lot of people are going to be looking at this as some sort of an inverted head and shoulders. It's not some sort of massive Quasimodo. Uh, I'd want to see like a V bottom for the head. Volume signature is also wrong. And more importantly, for you know, if you're going to play pattern, if you are going to be a pattern trader, which I am not, um, admittedly so, and probably admittedly so, I'd want to see the actual break of the neckline first. But so on all count, on all counts, it would be wrong. However, the more and more that I look at this area right here as a whole, this area between uh, this consolidation between 37 and essentially 41, uh, this does look more and more like just that a consolidation, which is actually acting relatively okay right now. And I typically don't like doing it like this, but we do have something like this forming, it looks like. We do have something like this forming. Uh, going all the way back on over here now, but but of course with volume signature also confirming it's really this area that I wanna be concerned with. Now, are we forming a, a specific pattern? I mean, some people might, I've been hearing people call this like some sort of fucked up version of a cup and handle. Um, 
I don't know if I see quite quite yet. It, it it's it's this is why I don't like pattern trading because all I care about is support and resistance. But if we were to break out of 41, 10, 41, 20, that's when I do start looking to that move of you know potentially at about 44, 4500 ish area. Um, of course, I'm saying all sorts of bullish things right now, but am I actually bullish? Have I switched around to being bullish? No, not at all. I mean, I do not believe that the lows are in for Bitcoin. Uh, but you know, just like you can have your dumps in your uh, in your bull market, you can have your pumps in your bear market. And the measure move on this baby would actually be pointing perfectly towards right here which would which would incur a test of the 200 exponential and you know preferably the the uh the 200 simple as well and also coming back towards this uh this horizontal right here as well which is a historical one a historically very powerful one going all the way back towards august of 2017 so if that were to happen that's what i'd be looking for but of course a lot of things need to be initiated first and foremost and looking at the volume profile you do see that you know if bitcoin does break above 41 10 41 20 41 50 ish area um not too much stopping it. Uh, it ripped through on the way down. It can rip through on the way back up. You know, that's the, the old saying goes, the way you go up is the way you go and come down. And let me just make sure that my other account's safe and Safu over here. It is good. Awesome. Great. Been trading that good old Forex recently. Been having a lot of fun doing that. And uh, I do, you know, <clears throat> I, during during these kind of like slower times during Bitcoin land, it's it's it, it's best to play options on Bitcoin in my in my opinion and um, <clears throat> and then play spot on somewhere else. But I can actually bring up my Dribbit account. I forgot to bring that up uh, first and for, first and foremost. Let me just do it on my other screen really quick to so make sure that all this is uh, done properly. And my position actually looking at not too bad right now. The position that keeps on giving, and this is the beauty of options. It could be a lot more a lot more pressure off. Let's get this guy right on over here. There we go. Um, position now now producing about a uh, little over little over a quarter Bitcoin right now. So again, it's been a lot more pressure off. Uh, you know, as I said, I put this position on um, you know the other day, and uh, this is you know this this is why I love options because it takes. I no longer have to you know you you don't have to think in terms of like right or wrong with spot. It's like stop. It's like you enter the position stop loss. You're either right or wrong. With options, I can say this because. <clears throat> this is this is the fucking truth with options. I can be wrong on direction. That's why I'm not too concerned about direction right here, and still make money with options. And right now it's making it. Um, it's you know there there, uh, there are quite a few setups right here. So I'm actually just running a couple of spreads right now. I've got a put spread on right here, um, and also a call spread on or sorry a time spread on between these four thousand strikes and uh, and this forty two fifty, um, all the way out in April. Both decaying, both decaying rather rapidly. Uh, funnily enough, you know, usually the far outs would not decay that that rapidly, but uh, but they are right now. Anyways, back onto the back onto the charts. Um, going onto the four hour, you do see the same thing, same same sort of signature with the volume profile. If we break above four thousand, nothing stopping this thing from uh, from 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 the prior high 41, 41 to forty one fifty is going to be like a zone, right? Uh, we could even do something like this if you want to get a little bit more uh, a little bit more diabolical with it. But taking back off the take, take, taking back off the uh, the volume profile, you know, it's it, it's one thing before the next. And while I have been saying all these sort of bullish things, I want to be very careful with how I temper these statements because I'm not overall bullish. I don't believe that the lows are in, which we can get into a more deep discussion with that later. But for now, there is a competing narrative going on. We do have what seems to be a rising wedge, which I hate wedges. Uh, admittedly, I absolutely fucking hate wedges as they don't really typically uh, play out in my experience. However, when it is a bearish thing, an overall bearish market, I am more apt to play it. So if we did get another test to the upside of this, uh, of this resistance, which you actually could, con you actually could consider that past four hour dildo as a, uh, a as a test of that 40, 37 ish area, um, that uh, uh, that was a trade right there. That uh, that was a potential play, and um, and as long as we're kind of you know within the context of this, the volume signature works out for this uh, formation as well. In fact, it actually works out better, uh, funnily enough, as you do have this nice orderly drop off in volume going from right here, right where the pattern actually begins, towards where we are right now, and it is and it is dying out to a pretty small pattern right now. So that also does tell me that this formation is likely going to explode relatively soon. And when I say relatively soon, I mean probably, well. <laughs> This is what you're not going to like about it. Is that, uh, it definitely, or sorry, I should not say definitely. That's a that's a terrible word to use, but I'd say very, 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 very likely within the next five days. Which for now, that is pretty much akin to what Bitcoin does, right? Bitcoin has its moves. It has it has one one move a week, one move a week, and that's all you get. Um, but anyways, uh, I do want to go down to the two hour. Did we have any sort of bearish divergence going on in the last uh, on the on the last uh, push? Um, 
Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of bearish divergence here. Uh, more importantly, though, the jewel on both the two hour and the three hour is starting to set up. Uh, the two hour is not quite there. The three hour actually looks a lot more likely, but I need to see that next tick. If we start to curl down again, if you have access to the jewel, this is what I'm looking at right now. Uh, if we curl down on this three hour, that will be a signal to me um, and a very powerful signal at that most likely. So it's going to completely depend on, on where this next tick is. We'll get confirmation on that in the next uh, one hour from now, or one hour and three minutes, if you want to get super specific. Um, anyways, so with that said, I do want to get back on over to... Well, sorry, let's actually talk about this a little bit more while we're here. So with this with this potential rising wedge, which is a competing narrative with this whole formation, uh, if this were to break down, I'd first need to see a breakdown below, again, the critical area, 39.30 on a lower time frame. If we got a four-hour total closing below 39.30, that would be significant. Or, um, or a daily closing below 3,900, which would be... Which would which would quite literally destroy the structure in the more immediate time frames. Um, I'd be looking for a move back down to about 3,850, 3,800. And that would be where this support trend line comes back into play. So keep that one in mind as overall the picture is... The, 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 the picture has so much contingencies with it right now with how many ways that this can break. And I know that's not too helpful, but that is why I'm a supporting resistance trader for the most part. Um, when it comes down to it, when the, when, you know, during these breakouts, I typically don't play them unless if I got into a position beforehand off of one of the supports and resistances that just happened to, you know, continue onwards and forwards. Um, I did take a position off this 4,000 test right here, and I did... Um, and, and I will be holding it for now, but uh, I will definitely get rid of some of it relatively soon, about 20 bucks lower or about 10, even 10 bucks lower. You can't get too greedy right now. And, uh, and I'll get rid of some on the uh, on the support as well uh, if we do get down around there. And then I'll hold some just in case. But I do want to check out the historical volatility rank because that should also give us some insight into, um, you know, in, in, into how likely this thing is to break right now. And again, you know, God damn it, man. I absolutely love this indicator now. And it's so it, it's so funny because... Uh, my friend made it and uh and he's trying to convince me on it and and you know initially it was one of those things where like i've used something like this before and it's quite useful but i never really use it on the lower time frames which i'm actually doing now and we can see very easily here that we are consulting this in this area and we do have a nice orderly kind of fall off in this in this guy as well um which tells me that all of this move is you know as we saw in the lower time frames you know it, it's all one consolidation uh, but but more importantly, what I could say is that if I did see Bitcoin start to poke its head above resistance or below support, and we started to see the historical volatility rank, you know, get above this prior high, that would be my signal that this is ready to blow. This one's ready to break, and we're ready, and, and it's the actual move itself. So that would be the best way to kind of judge that, um, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, and has been extremely useful in the past in getting actual breakouts, even by being a supporting resistance trader, which really does take off even more pressure um, from being in at the right time, right? Anyways, uh, okay, so we spoke all about that. Of course, I want to go back on over here to CMEs. Um, if 3,900 is broken, that would be uh, extremely bad from CME perspective as this would destroy the whole structure. However, on CMEs, which I put a lot more respect on the chart of the CMEs uh, in comparison to spot charts because they just seem to get price action better. But if we were to break down below 3,900, that would be a whole breakage of structure and I would be looking for an overall move, according to this, at the very least down to 3,650 and probably to the low side of the range at 3,550. Um, and then after that, you know, it's just prior lows at 3,400-ish area. Uh, but more importantly, and, or start perhaps just as important, we're actually going to have a pretty uh, pretty powerful exponential moving average cross to the upside on these guys relatively soon as well, as you can see right here at uh, at 34, or sorry, uh, be between the yellow and the green uh, moving averages. That would be the 21 and the 55, which, assuming that price action stays, you know, at least as, as long as it stays above 39, you know, 10 at the very least, uh, we will get that cross. Now, I would be looking for a move back in to test the 10 simple, which was likely going to be coming around 39.20. But that's going to be a buy if these guys cross, especially if that gets defended. That's going to also give me, you know, insight into where this is likely to break, which would imply a much more uh, bullish resolution on this whole thing. Of course, this... This action that we're looking at on CMEs is very lackluster. It is extremely, extremely, extremely anemic. Looking at the volume signature down here, this is not the volume that I want to see on a major break out of a formation that everyone's looking at, or at least all the, all the people, all, all the professionals who actually look at uh, CME. Um, <clears throat> so it is suspect as of right now, uh, especially with no continuations. Um, that's really not a good sign. If I were looking at CMEs, yes, it, ha it has broken according to price action, but we do not have. Uh, or at least I'm not seeing what I want to see in an actual break. And you can see that uh, if we were to put in a horizontal right here, 
uh, getting the last couple highs, we have gotten exactly right to there. And where's that coming in around? Well, currently our, our you know, our, our current high right around, uh, what was it like 40 or sorry, 4,025, 4,030, something like that. Um, so you can see that this is still being respected and this is not, we're not really like breaking out in the more violent, uh, volatile way. Instead, we are looking like more consolidation. And if this does hesitate for any longer here, then what it typically morphs into is something like this. Well, we're, well, well, where we will have, you know, basically another rising wedge again, not my favorite, <laughs> I fucking hate wedges, but something like this which would imply more bearish resolution. Uh, and the volume signature would actually work for that a lot better. And the fact that the volume is so lackluster right here does really offer up the potential for a trap. So that will not be confirmed unless a Bitcoin breaks down below 3,900. But again, not in any sort of major hurry to get into a move like that, just because if Bitcoin were to break down below um, uh, 3,900, I mean, there is plenty of juice on this trade uh, all the way down to, uh, like I said, I really don't see anything stopping it from 3650 at that point. And overall, this whole narrative would take on a different, you know, a different meaning. And I'd be looking quite literally for a move down to the low side of the range. Uh, again, 3350 to 3400 ish area. Um, so we are in we are in a very interesting time right now because Bitcoin is going to choose the next the next direction. I'd assume, like I said, in the next five days at the very least, um, sorry, at the, at the very most, um, hourly does say that uh, that, uh, that move is probably coming sooner rather than later, however. Anyways, uh, okay, what else we have to be aware of on the CME? CME uh, daily stokes headed up, still 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 going north, still looking fine, uh, but getting into more critical zone. They haven't really survived much higher above this uh, above this area right here, but of course, it's still, you know, still have another couple days uh, to get there. Uh, Daily Jewel, um, not really saying anything right here. Neither, you know, it's it, it's obviously in an uptrend right now. Uh, Daily RSI, not really saying anything either. Uh, still getting rejected from the more bullish control zone, as you can see, however, which is not the best sign. And more importantly, we do have bearish divergence actually forming right now between this point and this point, which, like I said, I put a lot more weight on CMEs. Now, here's the thing. I need to confirm a local high first, but, you know, mapping out the case for the bears, they, they certainly do have a case right here as, uh, well, first and foremost, most no one's fucking bear so that's that's typically a good sign um but more importantly you know we are we are that that divergence is confirmed on a 12-hour dollar total time frame as you can see between this this point and this point we do have a confirmed local high right here uh the daily is not quite there just yet but usually if you get on a 12-hour it will have carry on over into the daily as you know it takes two 12 hours to make one daily uh, more importantly, daily stokes are getting into that same range as well. And as you can see, we do have a nice trend line forming right around here, which would put the trend line right at the edge of the more critical zone, which to me, if we do see it turn down from here, I, that would be a next big, uh, uh, that would be a next signal as well. And we will get another 12 hour dollar in the next, uh, in less than two hours. So that is quite, you know, quite soon. Um, you also do see this 200 simple moving average, this pink moving average right here, crawling its way down. It's going to be meeting up with the prior highs as well. The same area that we just spoke about. And it's just kind of showing how the longer that Bitcoin stays here without really taking that next step above 4,000 on spot essentially and closing above there on a higher level dollar time frame. Uh, the more and more that resistance kind of gets a chance to, to catch up and build up. And again, this 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 story is certainly not one sided right now. Uh, even though I did spend a lot of time on the more bullish um, side of it, the more bullish explanation of it uh, to begin with, you know, this is this is trading, right? So the next big skill is going to be judging where that next uh, 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 where that next actual breakout trade is. You know, not the support and resistance trade, which I do, I think kind of has you know a limited life going on. Uh, it's not going to you know we this this trade is not going to work out for the rest of fucking eternity. Is what I'm trying to say. In fact, I'd say you know really in the next couple of days I'd be looking for a break. Uh, prefer probably before the weekend. Um, probably before the weekend, especially going off of that uh, uh, going off the historical volatility rank on the lower time frames. Anyways, go check out GBDC. What is GBDC doing? Well, it's not doing anything. It's fucking closed. But what did it do last night? It actually closed right at the major resistance that we've been looking at, right around here. And what is this doing right now? Well, if we pick up the, if, if we look at the hourly, the hourly is printing a little bit of bearish divergence. Not only that, but if we go out to the daily, I mean, we are right at resistance as well on the daily, just taking everything off and getting naked on these charts. You do see a test to the 89 exponential right there, or at least I consider that a test. It's also kind of your prior high right here. Sorry, last prior high is one, one and two. So you would imagine that, you know, prob you know probably going to find a little bit of pressure there on, on first pass. But we have the same sort of exponential moving average cross that we saw in CMEs, the yellow 21 and the green 55 which are hinting at a bullish cross, which likely would be quite powerful. Um, but... <sighs> Bullish things in a bearish market are not my favorite way to play the game. Uh, we potentially, we, we don't have bearish divergence on a daily just yet. 
I would have to confirm a local high here, which is certainly not confirmed at all. In fact, daily Stokes did just cross back up to the upside and defended the more bullish control zone. So that is uh, that would be certainly a more positive thing to me. Um, but I, again, I would I would be looking for this to probably sell off on first pass. Uh, daily jewel is not telling us much. It might be setting up for a for like a weak signal, but I don't I don't like the weak signals, and I you know I wouldn't take them, so I would never you know it's probably not probably not worth talking about. Uh, four hour did take out the two hundred simple. It is looking okay, but it's four hour, you know. Mm, what else do we have to be aware of on the four hour? Uh, four hour does have a little bit of bearish divergence going on as well between this point and this point. Um, but again, it's 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 going to be really a game of support and resistance right here, uh, and that's really what I'm gonna, what I want to get out. Mental masturbation, awesome, absolutely great. But I need to see this actually close above five dollars. If we have an up open today on GBDC, that's probably going to be a very good sign. Uh, next big resistance would be right here, five and a quarter. And if uh, and I'd and I'd imagine that five and a quarter probably does sell off on first pass, uh, which would probably correlate with that forty one twenty ish area that we're looking at on on Bitcoin. So very 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 important. It's also going to be filling the gap from right over here in uh, in late November, which would also make sense. Um, so getting back on over to Mr. Bitcoin and where's uh, where's my longs and shorts? Yeah, longs and shorts both actually jockeying for positions right now. Both of them have added uh, since we last spoke. Uh, shorts have added, sorry, longs have added about a thousand coins since um, since uh, since the other day. And if we put on, oh man, it, that's right, I deleted all my drawings. Um, but when we look at this area right over here, you know, usually when longs get down into this in, in, into these crevices, that is actually where major major uh, pumps emerge from. But more importantly, the shorts have been a lot more surgical in how they initiate that. And each and every time that they've gotten into this uh, red box territory right here, uh, below 20,000 open shorts, those have been major, major, major dumps uh, for the past year without question. Each and every time, perfect, actually, unlike the longs, which has not been perfect. But this was your dump from 12,000 to 6,000 in, in February last year. This was your dump from 10,000 to, uh, to 6,000 in, in May last year. This was your dump from 8,400 to 6,000 in, in August last year. This was your dump from 6,000 to 3,000 uh, in November. And then once again, we got into this range and there is, we, we are seeing more and more people put on positions. I did see a shit ton of, uh, of, 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 of hedges being thrown up on data mission. Let me actually bring that up right now. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and as you can see, actually the number is a little bit different here. Longs are, longs are favored by, by, by quite a bit more, uh, but shorts are actually three and a quarter, three and a third hedged right now. So that's a little under 20,000 open, open naked shorts versus almost 24,000 open longs, which is, is a nice imbalance, not anything crazy or anything like that. But let me remind you that actually the last time that we had a similar kind of posture between these two was, well, in it, on the dump of uh, of what's it called of six thousand where longs were right around here right around about twenty four to twenty five thousand which they're approaching right now and shorts were kind of crawling their way out of the uh, out of the twenty thousand range as well so we do have a similar setup to that but again an underlying market dynamic going on in favor of uh, in favor of that yes I do put some weight on it but. When looking at the picture as a whole, I want to be very agnostic in this range. Again, as a trader, um, as far as the overall picture, though, do I think that the lows are in? Yeah, you know, I've talked, I've talked so many bullish things right now, which I don't want to be misconstrued um, as me being bullish, thinking that the lows in. I do not believe that the lows in until I see a few different things. The first and foremost, and uh, an easiest thing to do, but would not necessarily get me fully convinced, would be a weekly total, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average right here, which is around where 41.10. You know, right around that resistance. That we just looked at governing all the last few highs actually on the weekly one two three and perhaps four or, or perhaps working on four um if we could both open and close a weekly total above that that would that I, it wouldn't necessarily make me believe that the lows are in. It would drastically change my tune on Bitcoin. I'd be looking for an extended run into the 4,000s. I think that at that point, it'd be extremely likely that we go and test the daily 200 simple uh, as we looked at somewhere around, what was it, what was it 45? Um, somewhere around there, you know, give or take a few bucks. And that would kind of change around or perhaps not change around, but we would be looking at, you know, a more extended amount of time being put in uh, in this range. Uh, the next point, however, is significantly more important, and that is the monthly 21 exponential which is all the way at 5200 right now and as long as bitcoin's below it i am I'm, I'm not bullish i'll put it this way i'm not bullish as long as bitcoin is below it and again that's coming in around 5200 in traditional markets where i come from as a market maker authorized trade on the floor of new stock exchange arca i used to use a 21 exponential on the monthly on on equities to judge if it was generally bullish or generally bearish well as you can see, Bitcoin well below right now, uh, but also for the validity of it, the last time that Bitcoin was actually below it 
um, so sorry, more importantly, the, the last time that Bitcoin was below and then regained it right here was actually the perfect entry into a bull market for the next three years. I mean, absolutely beautiful. And you know what? Let's actually do the, the true justice that, that it deserves and look at it on linear scale, which it looks like that. Enter in right here on the, uh, sorry, it was, it was entering right here at about like 350, 400 bucks when we regained the 21 exponential and then straight on up for the next three years. So not bad, not bad at all. Uh, yeah, about 350, 350 to 20,000. Not bad. Not fucking bad at all. Um, so yeah, I do want to get that out as, uh, as, as of course, Bitcoin has a lot of way to change, has a long way to go to change the macro. Of course, the micro timeframes, the, the, the small to medium timeframes, they are, you know, you can certainly construct a bullish case for them right now, which, um, which I, I think de deserves its, you know, its own merit, of course. Um, and then the third and final and most important piece of information that I need to see for, for me to change from, or for, for, uh, for me to change to bullish on Bitcoin is getting back above 6,000 right here, the area that that it spent about a year going sideways upon. If we could get back above there from the most traditional standpoint, that would be, you know, no reason to be bearish after that. But anyway, uh, but uh, but anyways, while we are here, here's the pr here's here's what makes this difficult is that we are so close to this 50 exponential, and of course this is on a monthly, which needs to be respected, you know, by that same time frame. And we still have like what another another 10 days in March, right? Another 10 days in March. Well, I don't know how many days are in March, but we, however many days there are. Fair enough. Uh, more importantly, more importantly, uh, where we close in relation to this green 50 exponential, which is coming in right around 3,900, is going to really dictate for me where the next couple months is likely to go. If we close above 3,900, I would be looking for I I, I would be looking for that move into the uh, it, it, into the medium or sorry into the middle of the 4,000 most likely. Um, by the same token, if we close below the 50 exponential, which has actually been governing all the last highs of the past three months, one, two, three, uh, ever since we broke for the first time, by the way, in Bitcoin's history right here in December of 2018, then I would be looking for an overall move to the downside of the range and likely you know i don't want to say i don't want to imply that it's going to be that same month but likely a move down to this 89 exponential right here at the uh, at this 2500 mark which actually does agree with a lot of the other things that we've been saying so going back to our bitstamp chart going back to the weekly if i want to make it a little bit more easy for myself on the would you want to call this a medium or a macro time frame i don't know what you want to call it but on the weekly time frame if Bitcoin were to break the pink 200 simple moving average to the downside, which is all the way at 3,400, then yes, that would be my other trigger for that. That would be more my my more actionable trigger for taking a trade to that range, which if we do break 3,400, the pink 200 simple moving average to the downside, I'd be looking for an overall move again into that blue box territory as we saw in the monthly about 2,500, but I have this area between 20, 23 to 2,600 right here, marked off by these historical horizontal trend lines, which looks a lot better on a daily. Uh, going back to June of 2017, you also will notice that this is the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which actually is where Bitcoin did about amount in 2014, 2015, Mark cycle right here. Um, and if we put on the volume profile, once again, you will notice that there is very little being done between the 3,400 number and then, again, that mid to low 2,000s um, as well. And very similar to what we did at 6,000, where, you know, Bitcoin broke down, it just just straight up, just straight up ran through uh, 5,000, 4,000, all the way to high 3,000s right here. You'd likely have another quick move. Uh, very, 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 very likely. Uh, but of course, quick move is is within the context of the time frame. So you know, a quick move from six thousand to to high three thousands really occurred over the course of one, two, three, four, five weeks. I mean, that's quite significant. Six weeks before the actual bounce, if you want to get super specific. Um, so yeah, looking at something like this, uh, that would be you know, if if I am looking for the next big directional trade, that's what I'd be looking for. I need to see that two hundred simple on the um on the weekly being taken out, and if that were to happen, then you know, uh, I'd be looking for that nice trade towards, again, 25, uh, 2,500, tw you know, in, in that range, maybe a little bit lower. Um, so again, that's 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 kind of what I'm thinking right there. Let's go over. I forgot to talk about the two day and the three day. Uh, two day little time frame. We're having the same sort of resistance coming in where coming in right around four thousand ish area. Uh, did we close above it yesterday? Actually, technically, Bitstamp did close above it. I don't believe that Bit Mexico did. Bit Mexico did. Actually, did it. Uh, yeah, it did. Oh wow. Uh, a few ticks above it, but mm, need to see both an open and a close above it. But yeah, it is looking like it's kind of gaining it right here. Uh, overall, not seeing any like glaring issues with this. Uh, we do have two day stokes up, so I would be more bullish off that. Uh, I do you see two-day RSI is not telling us anything too interesting. It's it's neither bullish nor bearish. It's I, I guess it's a little more positive than negative. But overall, the greater picture is that we've just been consolidating between the bearish control zone and the new and, and sorry the neutral zone, getting rejected from the bullish control zone um, so far. Uh, so what's the jewel saying? Jewel's not really saying anything. 
Uh, let's go to the three day. The three day looks a lot more bullish than anything actually. Uh, three day having a very obvious uh, momentous close above the above all uh, above both the ten simple and the yellow twenty one exponential, which did get the more bullish cross to to the upside. But this has not been really respected in the past. Um, going back on over here to Bitstamp, so we can get some more accurate data. Yeah, it really hasn't been respected to, uh, in the past. It's too much of a lagging indicator on a three day little time frame. It's 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 much better on a daily. And I believe I do have an, uh, a free video on this in the technical analysis um, and. And, uh, in strategies playlist so check that out uh, it explains how to actually play that cross but uh, the day yeah the, the the daily gets it a lot better the three day not so much in fact the three day has just been getting the dumps more more uh, more accurately funnily so so funnily enough and where's the three day 10 simple moving average coming in around 3900 so just more things coming in and suggesting that hey if Bitcoin does give up 3900 I would become immediately a lot more bearish um, for a momentous move probably to the downside of the range by the same token as long as Bitcoin's above it I do treat this as a consolidation and you know technically it is kind of setting up in a more in a more positive more constructive way so yes and by the way while I am on this topic Jesus Christ man I keep on forgetting to talk about it all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month i'll flash the code right here where is it do i do i have it there it is yes with the code year 20 in all capitals y-e-a-r 20 um i want to make sure that you take advantage of all my free content first before ever considering any one of these programs because these programs are likely going to be way too much overkill for the general person out there they're 35 hours plus for the technical analysis program and also, and also the master options program obviously the jewel program is just you know access to indicators with a few videos on how to use them nothing more than that um so you know definitely take advantage of my of my free content which i've well over a thousand hours of, of free shit on the internet now um and that's going to get most of people to the way that which they want to be but for the person who wants to take it you know one step further then i would suggest that that these programs are actually designed for for that sort of person but again i want to be very very you know i, I want to be very direct in saying this that i have no intention to sell anything to someone that doesn't need it because i again like i show with my streamer account I don't make my money, you know, I make my money, I make my money from actually trading, which is much more important to me and much more <laughs> lucrative, to be honest, as well. Um, I'd be kind of fucked the other way, <laughs> to be honest. But my point is, is that if you're going to invest in one of these programs, you're also going to invest into getting access into the uh, into the members only Discord community, which is going to be all sorts of like minded people typically going towards the same sort of goal as this as a living. And with that sort of a group, it's very important to me to maintain the integrity of that group. So it's it's I'm not trying to down talk anyone here. If you don't want to be a trader for a living, I completely fucking understand that. People have lives. People have other you know other um, other priorities. 100% understand that. But if that isn't you, then this then then that group is probably not for you. So I'll get off the topic right now because I know it's fucking annoying. And let's get back on over into the magical charts that tell us everything that we need to know. Um, so 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 I think we spoke about everything that I want to speak about on Mr. Bitcoin. Spent a lot of time on the lower time frames, which is where all the action really is going down right now, um, or perhaps up. <laughs> uh, but let's go. Let's actually go check out Mr. Buterol and uh, and Mrs. Litecoin. How are the other market leaders doing? While well, Bitcoin is, I'd say, in a neutral consolidation, or it, I mean. I mean, it does look more constructive rather than anything. I uh, do you see that Mr. Buterol has regained all these moving averages right here, and is but is still struggling right around this critical one. Do you want to call it 140? Let's just call it 144. Make it easy. Uh, as, as long as it's struggling around 144, it is still the laggard of the group. Uh, daily stokes are getting quite up there, but not crossing down um, just yet. Uh, daily RSI not telling us anything unique about the price action. Quite literally right in the middle. Uh, daily Jewel mm, pretty neutral as well. Not getting any insight uh, from any of these indicators right now. Uh, as far as as far as price action goes, it's quite clear. Uh, 144. If that breaks, I'd be looking for a, a extre uh, extremely likely a move to about uh, 152 and a half. But pretty likely that we actually make a, a pretty likely. Uh, uh, that it actually makes a move towards 162, the prior high. Also, the 200 simple um, on the daily. Uh, but more importantly, if it breaks to the downside with a break, you know, with like a four hour total close, let's say 137 and a half, uh, I would not be looking for a move just to here, just to 134. I'd actually be looking for a move all the way down to about 127 and a half to 128, down to the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement, which would likely occur with Bitcoin back down to about 3650, 3600 even. So Mr. Buterol is certainly the wild card right now. It is it, it is the weakest of the bunch. Uh, looking at the four hour here. Um Four hour stokes are looking weak, but they are up. They are up. Uh, four hour RSI, mm, trending below the exponential. And four hour jewel, ooh, four hour jewel. Uh, I really, I fucking hate taking signals in the middle of the range, but this could be a setup. 
we did just get another tick on this. So if the next tick is down, that would uh, that would be an actionable trade. Um, but again, it's I, I'd rather take a trade off of uh, you know off, off of a move up here off the resistance and then you know and then potentially hold it if that were if that were to be the actual way for that indicator. For right now, we still need to see one more one more curving down, just like we saw on uh, on on the three hour jewel for for Bitcoin himself. So yeah, uh, and more importantly, you know, price action is going to pri uh, pri price action is going to make this one quite easy. Break above 144, long tail 152 and a half. I, I think it was break below one. What, what was it? 137 and a half, 138. I'm looking for a move down to likely about 120, 127 and a half, 128 overall. So we are tightening up this range quite a bit, and Mr. Buterol is forming a lot, uh, some, something that is a lot more indicative of you know of, of a bearish pattern. We are forming a rising channel, or do you want to call it a rising? Which I don't care what the fuck you call it again all i care about is how you react uh, respond around supporting resistance um but the overall resistance to this would you know technically be coming in right around uh, 147 so perhaps something to be aware of you likely will have resistance from that area just because this former order block right here is going to be coming into play actually that did grab our prior high so i do like that but these charts are just getting more and more con convoluted and we don't really need to do all this more tentacle type shit to get a good trade in um so again, you know, just making it simple, 144 to the upside, 137 and a half to the downside. Uh, until that happens, just just being a, just being a player on supportive business, just like Bitcoin. Uh, what's, Mr., what's Mrs. Litecoin doing? Mrs. Litecoin looking a little bit weaker as well, uh, kind of giving it up. And let's go to the daily. What does the daily look like? Again, I called a top on this at one, uh, sorry, 60, what was it, 61 and a half, 62. Uh, looks to me like it's a rejection of the uh, 377 exponential on the daily so far, which also does match up perfectly with this horizontal and also can be considered a retest of this upper resistance trend line of this ascending brawny wedge which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern um, we do see that daily stokes i'm going to believe are down yes they are crossed down we do see daily rsi is having major bearish divergence going all the way through now extremely heavy bearish divergence and daily jewel is giving is giving a little bit of a setup right here uh, it's not a perfect setup but it's it's i it's looking to me like it probably does want to get played now i have been i, I have been looking for this to put, to have a pullback but am i necessarily bearish on mrs litecoin well no because of two things first things first there are an incredible amount of shorts on mrs litecoin i think they're at all time highs right now which when you you're grinding a major resistance that could actually, that if it breaks, I would be not bearish on Mrs. Litecoin anymore. Um, and you have that many shorts available to provide the rocket fuel liquidity for the upside there. Uh, that would be the underlying market dynamics that I'd be looking for to actually switch Mrs. Litecoin into, or sorry, out of a bearish market and into, you know, at, at the very least a sideways market and likely bullish. Um, so while I am looking for a pullback likely to about $56, I wouldn't necessarily be super bearish just yet. I wouldn't be bearish until Mrs. Litecoin breaks, I mean, $52 to the downside. If it breaks 52 and a quarter, sorry, 52 and a half to the downside, then yes, I would be more bearish. But as you can see, the green 50 and the purple 200 are getting very close to each other. And that, if they do cross the upside, that will be a golden cross. And that is something that I never, I, I do not trade against that. Uh, it, it, mean, it means a lot. It means a lot to me. So more importantly, we don't have the cross just yet. Of course, a lot of the times be right before the cross is about to happen, and this one's probably about a, uh, probably like four days away from happening. I, I think mm, maybe longer than that as we are kind of struggling here. Um, but, uh, but you know, the, the closer and closer that it gets to happening, I do want to see a pullback into that region. But the real test, the real, the real key of this is going to be exactly what we saw in SPIES. What is the reaction off that area? I'd imagine that first things first, 50, if $56 gets defended, that will be incredibly bullish to me if that were to happen. Now, if $56 is lost, is the, uh, is the game over? Not quite yet. I'd say if $52.5 gets lost, then I would be looking for a move back down to about $44.5 um, down around here. And I would be, and, and, I'd, and I'd interpret that as a, uh, as, as kind of a hunt, you know, baiting in all of the over aggressive algos and bot traders into thinking that it's a golden cross, and then right at the last second, fucking dump it in their face, as uh, as we've seen on plenty of other occasions. So yeah, I, I would still be looking for this to have an, a more extended pullback um, at the very least, fifty six dollars. But personally, personally speaking, um, I do think that it pops back down to fifty two and a half dollars. I do not have an opinion on whether the golden cross gets played or not. But the longer that it actually maintains above fifty six dollars, the more and more likely that you will get that golden cross uh, sooner rather than later. If we do break fifty six dollars to the downside, this golden cross is going to lose its 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 more violent kind of uh, you know slopes right now, um, which are actually already being lost. 
So I'd imagine even a move back down to fifty six dollars is not is gonna is actually gonna put that timeline back quite a bit. Uh, and as we saw, you know, major bearish divergence on a daily uh, stokes coming down, major major rejection off of a major exponential right here, and also a major horizontal, also bearish pattern as well. So as long as Mrs. Litecoin is below sixty three or is, what is it? It's sixty three and a half officially. Uh, I would not I, I would not be I, I would be looking for that pullback sooner rather than later. Um, it's going to really depend on what that reaction is. So again, Jesus Christ, man, looking at this Forex stuff and it's just moving all over the place. This thing's crazy. It's got a mind of its own. Um, okay, cool. So we spoke about Mrs. Litecoin. Uh, let's get now on over here to, we talked about GBDC. Yeah, let's talk about, okay, let's talk about the top shit coins. Uh, what about BNB? BNB, say, ooh, BNB is doing exactly what we talked about yesterday. Broke this, uh, uh, broke this rising wedge to the downside or looking like it wants to break, to break to the downside. Major bearish divergence playing out. This is what I believe Litecoin is likely to do. One, two, three stabs below the exponential and making its way down. Also, Daily Jewel has given the signal once again. Oh my God, but you can't short this bullshit. Uh, Daily Stokes are coming down as well and actually pre pre uh, presenting a little bit of divergence. So I would be looking for a probably back down i mean yes you do have support right around here 14 dollars and uh 70 what is it like 71 cents uh, but i would be looking for a move back down to about 14 dollars and uh 13 and a half cents ish area that's going to be the real test do we hold above this or not because if, if 14 if 14 dollars and what was it like 10 cents uh, gives way then you know yes there is support right here at about 12 dollars and 90 cents but really i I, th I think that it would come all the way back down to uh 11 dollars and uh, 75 cents something like that uh, for right now it is breaking the formation and uh i believe that we do see this one come down further again most preliminary support right around 14 72 and a half uh if that area gives way then 13 dollars 90 cents uh z cash the real b cash is he breaking out just yet has he joined the rest of the crew and he has and he's actually got he's, he's actually gone to our next target uh just about perfectly uh, right around this um uh, uh right around the cyan 89 exponential again very lackluster volume on this breakout which makes me very apprehensive uh if this thing really were to get going i'd imagine that your next big selling point is going to be right around here right around about 60 68 to 69 bucks um area uh daily stokes are going to be turning down right now even as it just broke out daily rsi is Ooh, is it gonna? It, it did look like I guess it is breaking out of this channel. No, it is not. Not not quite just yet. Still a long day to go, but this could be a major sell right here. Uh, it could be a major sell. Uh, also at the 12 hour 200 uh, 200 exponential. Um, I'd probably hold on a, hold on off it hold on off it just yet. Uh, but with the rest of the market kind of looking a little bit tired, you know, probably does carry carry on its way over to Zcash. So as always, you know, it's just more easy to watch the uh, the rest of the market. Uh, Bcash uh, again getting stopped right at the area that we spoke about. I'd be looking for a pullback, probably down around to 144 ish area, um, maybe a little bit higher, 144, 145, something like that. Uh, but overall, Bcash. The real Zcash, uh, Stokes getting way up there, very mature. Uh, daily RSI is no divergence, but I'm going to guess that we do have some on like at least an eight hour, and we do have major bearish divergence on an eight hour, and that would tell me also that we'd, I'd be looking for a move back down to at the very least about 150 and a half. Uh, but overall, in the higher time frames, I, I would be saying that, uh, what was it, like 144, 145? Mm, kind of likely as well. Uh, Tron Cash, what's Tron Cash doing? Is he saving the world with his smart toilets just yet? And still, still kind of again <laughs> sideways on this bitch. Um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, yes, this is an overall bearish setup. Uh, daily Stokes are mm, pretty lackluster. Daily RSI is kind of in a bearish posturing, but not. I mean, it's it, but but not really like too intense. You know, when I see something like this, we are right in the middle of a range of a trading range, and I don't want any piece of it. I'll take a trade off of two and a half cent, or I'll take a trade off of uh, two point one nine cent or two point one eight cent, but nothing else. Um, no interest. As I look at my other screen right now, and my God, this thing, this thing is just a beast. So crazy. Um, anyways, so back on to the charts. Let's go on to Neo and Neo doing the same thing, kind of, kind of really, uh, what's it called? Uh, struggling, hesitating right at this area, which I don't want to see. I don't want to see. And overall, the greater picture at large is that of a massive rising channel, rising wedge, typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Um, the obvious support is right here, right around nine dollars and twenty cents. If nine dollars and twenty cents gives way, sorry, it's actually a little bit lower than that, about nine dollars and uh, fourteen cents. If nine dollars and fourteen cents gives way, if we actually break that support, I would be looking for a move at the very least down to eight eighty, and then probably down here to about eight thirty. Um, obviously, resistance is right here at about nine sixty five. As long as nine sixty five is defended. Um, 
you know, I do look at this as just another, you know, just another consolidation, which, you know, playing support and resistance, if, if, if it does break above 965, I would be looking towards a move uh, pr to probably around the prior high, about $10 and uh, 40 cents ish area. Uh, but we do see our, our, uh, our daily oscillators are coming down, daily stokes coming down, daily RSI coming down as well, uh, back below the exponential, not necessarily the best setup. What about EOS cash? Same thing as we've seen for the last few days. This one's actually quite cut and clear. Uh, 200, ex 200 simple to the upside at 390 is your resistance, and, two, uh, and 21 expansion to the downside is your support at 369. If 369 does fail, I'd be looking for a move all the way down to about 342 and a half. Um, very obvious resistance right around that 390-ish area. If 390 breaks the upside, I would be looking for a move probably to the prior high. Um, but same thing here, you know, got daily stokes looking a little bit tired, got daily RSI mm, setting up perhaps, I mean, use, using the exponential as resistance. So it is kind of setting up, uh, daily, daily jewel, not saying anything could consider that even maybe even, um, mm, no, nah, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, so yeah, not really too much to be made out of this one. In fact, this one's actually a little bit more of an obvious formation as well, though. We have some like this, right? So <clears throat> some sort of a massive triangular consolidation, which... You know, technically speaking, uh, do you you know could could you put a name on this triangle? Yeah, it'd be it would be a bull it would be a bull pennant, right? But the reason why I don't like putting names on these things is because at the end of the day, it only matters as a trader. As a trader, uh, uh, an analyst is different, but as a trader, someone who actually has accountability for trading and making money, <laughs> uh, I can only care about how you react upon uh, or respond upon supporting resistance, which right now is just right in the middle, literally right in the middle. So nothing to do there. Uh, let's go check out Mr. Ripple's nipples. Mr. Ripple's nipples. Has he been freed? No. Who's going to free the goddamn nipple? Brad Garlic House is getting all kinds of uh, anxious right now. Uh, still in the overall contest of a descending triangle. The more the more preliminary price action uh, being, you know, same, same area. Three, uh, 30 point eight cent now is support and uh, 32 cent resistance right here. If 32 cents resistance is taken out to the upside, I would be looking for a move, you know, to likely 33 and a quarter. But really overall, I'd be looking for a move towards 34 and a half. Uh, by the same token, if this support fails right here at about 30 point eight cents, I would be looking for a move down to the low side of the range at 29 to, uh, to 28 and a half cent region. That's where the big support does indeed lie because that is the support of this massive descending triangle, which is typically a more bearish result pattern but just like but, but but like i just said you know we need to see an actual break first if that would actually break i would be looking for a move down to uh you know low 20 cents to high teens um very 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 bad and very lackluster and very mm, la it, it's a laggard right now mr ripples nipples just not showing the same sort of um not showing the same sort of potential momentum that the other charts are showing actually which is mm, not a good sign. Uh, Mr. Monero, what's he doing? Ooh, giving another stab at this um, at this resistance right here. Another stabby stab and actually living right above it. This one looks like it wants to break. Monero actually does look like it wants to break to me. Uh, let's look at our oscillators. Daily Stokes are, ooh, looking like they want to cross back up, actually. Uh, Daily RSI is a little bit of bearish divergence. No, sorry, no bearish divergence. Um, nothing to say about it. It looks okay. No, no glaring obvious issues. Uh, so I would say that Mr. if Mr. Monero can close above uh, $54.50, I would be looking for a move probably around to uh, 58, 58 and a quarter. Uh, right here, let's actually mark it off. Keep it, keep it accountable for this one. That one could be a nice little move right there. Uh, what else do we want to look at? Uh, we got Stellar, Stellar Rumens. How they doing? Uh, Stellar Lumens finding another resistance off this, um, off the rising trend line, the rising resistance trend line of this ascending broadening wedge, which. To me, it actually does, it kind of does look like it wants to break. We just got a pretty uh, powerful exponential moving average cross right here. Uh, let's check out Daily Stokes. Daily Stokes are down, not a death sentence in that area. Daily RSI looks okay on a daily, but let's go to maybe a six hour. I'm curious what this one looks like. Are we having a lot of bearish evidence in this area? We are. So while we might get another test of this area, this 11, this 11 points, this, this 11 and three quarter cent region, um, there's a lot. I, I really don't like trading against that sort of bearish divergence. Also, a uh, six-hour jewel given a massive sell signal uh, a couple ticks ago right here. So I, I, I would probably not be bullish on this one. Again, in the overall context of an ascending broadening wedge, uh, but which which is typically a, bear, a more bearishly resolved pattern. Um, if it were to come back down, I'd be looking for support right around 10.85 cent, 10.9 cent. If that area fails, I'd be looking for a full move down to around uh, around low 10 cent. Uh, still got a lot of day to go on this one, though. Uh, 12, hour, 12 hours really do want to come down as well. Uh, so let's get back on Mr. Bitcoin. We'll start to wrap this bitch up because spoke spoke along for too spoke spoke for too long already. Getting my words all mixed up too. So I know that's annoying, but hey. 
Fair enough, man. You need to go back to school and, uh, and learn how to speak properly. Anyways, um, as far as Bitcoin is concerned, lower time frame still looks like it's trying to flag out right here. Uh, resistance right around 4,000, still not broken. Support right around, you know, 3930, more, uh, more conservatively speaking. Um, whichever one breaks first, I'd be looking for that next momentous move. The more bearish uh, view of this is that this is a rising wedge, and we actually just tested the top once again. Um, the bearish view would be if we break 3930 to the downside, I'd be looking for a move down to around 30, 3850, 3800. Um, and then overall, if we were to see the CMEs break 3,900, more importantly, then I'd be looking for a move down to actually 3,650. So that off, that obviously come in conflict with each other. Uh, but that's why I think it's very important to keep an eye on CMEs as it does hold a lot more weight and their charts are a lot more clear. And that's what it'd be su suggesting right now. By the same token, however, if Bitcoin does break above 4,000, I would be looking for that measure move to about 4,120, 4,150-ish area, right around here, right around the prior high. Um, and that will actually set up the whole, the, you know, the whole charts as it is. Uh, looking like it could have a major breakout out of this, you know, if it can break out of, you know, 4150, 4200, then I'd be looking for that move to, uh, to 45, uh, 4550, actually. Uh, but for now, you know, overall in a bearish market, I'm going to be bearish. But uh, in the very low time frames, if we were to break this area, I probably will take a long. I don't see any reason not to. I took a long when we broke out of 3930. Um, nice little $100 play right there. But overall, I mean, this is, you know, until we actually get a break one way or the other, until we at least get like a two hour total opening or closing uh, above or below. Uh, one of those major resistances or supports. It's just a game of support and resistance. That's all it has to be. Uh, the pl that's been the play for the last four days. And, you know, it's not it's not anything glamorous, but it makes money. Singles win too, man. Singles win too. You don't, don't, don't need to hit a home run every time. In fact, you only need to hit a home run, you know, once a year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you catch the short from 6,300, so I mean that that's I mean that's that's probably gonna do you do you good for a while. So again, I, I always want to preach pack, uh, you know pressure off mentality because you don't want to be coming from a from a you know a venue of pressure on because it's just gonna it's just gonna probably incite the wrong you know emotional responses to a lot of the things that trading can um, bring up. Anyways, that's gonna do that's gonna do it for right now. Uh, I'll be back on there with some more live stream action. Do want to be wishing you well on this beautiful hump day, and take care.